listen to this show today. Why can't governments get along and help this country move forward instead of stepping backwards? We discuss that in this next segment. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Golfy with Remax, the Golfy team. Welcome to the Golfy Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition with Rick, uh, with host Rick Zamprin. Good morning and happy Saturday to one and all. Rick Zamprin here, Rob Golfy there. He's from the Golfy team, the number one Remax team. In Canada, if you want to sell your house or you're in the market to buy a home, call the Golfie team today at 905-575-7700 online at robgolfie.com. That's Rob, G-O-L-F-I dot com. They're all over Instagram and Facebook, TikTok, Threads, X, you name the social media platform. The Golfie team is dominating with some great content and awesome listings. You can get your listing on there as well by calling the Golfie team today, 905-575-7700. Well, a plethora of topics to get to today, but let's start with what is happening in your real estate life this week, Mr. Dolphy. Well, I, I, I truly feel that things are um, starting to pick up uh, to a certain degree. The confidence level is, star is starting to happen. Now, uh, uh, interest rates are held. People are seeing that, you know, that they're used to the interest rates they are, but they also feel that they you know, with all the rumors and the, and the hype that's saying that down that later this year or middle of this year, uh, interest rates will come down and which, which will, cause they need to, uh, for us to do some, to build more houses in this country. Um, but yeah, like, um, the, the morale is pretty good out there and, uh, you know, people are starting to look around and everything. So that means it, it's going to start getting busier, uh, it, it, probably in, into March and, and, and the end of this, uh, the end of this month. And, and it has picked up. There's no doubt about it. Um, we've, uh, we, we felt it and people are calling, looking at buying and selling and stuff like that. But there is a certain group of people and I, and you know what it is? I'll tell you, um, here's a perfect example. You know, when people, they uh, upgrade, they put a brand new kitchen in their house, right? And it's an mm -hmm. updated kitchen. They did. And they did this 20 years ago. You'll talk, if you talk to that same person, they'll say, we just updated our kitchen. Even like, like they think they just <laughs> did it like a year or two ago. They forgot that yeah. 20 years just have passed. And then, and sometimes when you try <laughs> to talk to them, they go, Hey, we updated this kitchen. This is an updated kitchen. Yeah. 20 years yeah. ago, most people have already been on their second or third kitchen already since 20 years ago, but, but that's what they're forgetting. And the, and the same thing with the prices of houses. So we do see some people they go yeah my neighbor up the street he sold uh, a house uh just recently uh for you know let's say nine hundred thousand. and meanwhile his and it's it really the value of his house is maybe somewhere in the mid 700s to high 700s 800 and he is still locked in on that in his head and i said well did that just recently sell yeah he goes yeah not that long ago it just uh, it just happened and then we tell him it's like we're telling him like it's two three years ago and and they t sense of time goes by quick for a lot of people, even you and I, Rick, and everybody else out there, when we think of something and we we're thinking it was just, it, things just happened a few months ago and really it could be a few years ago. And, and it just shows you how time flies. And, and that's the one thing in, uh, that we try to educate people on. And that's why I bring my laptop there and show them all the details and saying, here's how things are going in the market. And some of them grab it and some of them just won't let go. They, and it, and it's just you, and it's hard you, it's hard to, uh, you know to to deal with that sometimes we have to say you know what it, you, you, your number is way off unless they have a house that everything's done like it's like a it's like a brand new house like new kitchens new bathrooms new flooring uh, uh everything everything is all new uh people will pay a premium for that there's no doubt about it and uh so so those houses yeah i definitely would you know put on the market and and and, and try the market to see if they'll pay the premium price for for that house but any anything else it's it, it gets tough it gets tough that emotional connection to your home and thus your home value has always been there. But have you noticed that over the last, I don't know, five, six years, as we kind of, you know, go back in time, has it gotten worse? Are people more emotionally invested in what their home or what they think their home is worth? Yeah. You know, you know what they are They're They are more uh, emotionally invested in what their home is worth more so now than I, than I think even when I first started in this business, um, I really truly feel like people are like, I mean, information is everywhere. It's at your fingertips. And, and I think 
that that's why back when I started, I mean, we, I think we were at flip phones, you know what I mean? Like this is even before Blackberry came out. Um, but, uh, I, I truly feel that because of the speed of technology, how it is now, um, uh, more people are in tune and some people aren't in tune. It just depends on who they are. And uh, I think the older generation, a lot of them feel that uh, they're going back based on and prices that happened two, three years ago. But then there's the other people, they go based on what went up for sale that didn't sell. Hey, that house down the street, they, they listed at uh, 950,000. Yeah, but they didn't sell. Yeah, but you know what? Maybe it wasn't the right, you know, time and stuff like that. So, so you got to deal with those objections and handle that. And sometimes they they will understand, and sometimes they don't. And it's just and it's just a matter of this. Somebody will list the house at that price, and they'll go through the aches and pains of being on the market for three to six months. You know, having maybe the odd person come through, they have to get themselves out of the house and 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 go through the long process. I'm selling their house. Right now, um, I have always said February is a good time to put your house on the market, and, and it is. But we, we are getting action on, on houses pretty good. And, uh, and, uh, and you know what? Um, like, I sold my other property for $20,000 more. I, I did put it up for sale last year, and I probably was pushing just the market a little bit. But then I put it at 450000 It was at 500000 last year. I put it at four fifty, and I signed it back at four seventy, twenty thousand 20000 higher than the asking price. But I waited to see if there was any other pro uh, properties on the market that I'd be in competition with. And I saw that a couple, of, a lot of them came to, either came off the market or didn't sell. And then, boom, I put mine on, and I was able to be strong on my number on my price. So that, that's also a good indicator. Now, another indicator, and this is a great uh, education, for um, um, like other realtors. Um, if you've got a great property, um, I try not to list on a Monday. And just because of the fact that you want that Toronto buyers coming in with their Toronto agents or whatever, because if you put your house on the market on a Monday and you get an offer on Wednesday, well, those Toronto buyers are not going to drive down in the middle of the week to see a house as much as they would on the weekends. So, what, and then you get an offer and then you, you, and you deal with the offer and you sell it. And meanwhile, the weekend comes and you probably would have got another maybe 10 showings on the house and maybe possible multiple offers. So you got to be very careful. So we try to list the house either later in the afternoon on a Thursday. And then, and then you know, the Toronto people say, hey, let's book this one on Saturday or Sunday. And, uh, and then you deal with an offer on the weekend. And, and then pretty well you got the local market that looked at the house and saw can see it and also the outside market where they have time to drive down the Queen Elizabeth way and see it on their day off or whatever because most people are off on weekends usually so you want to make sure your house gets on the market later in the week and I, I truly believe in that and 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 I, I think over 30 percent of the homes that are sold in, in in the Hamilton Burlington area and also Niagara are agents coming from the gta i don't know like some of these guys they spend a half a day or a full day like it's a, it's a lot of work uh and a, and a lot of time to go outside your market uh to to, to bring clients even though and they don't even know the market that they're looking at they just like look at the house okay is this good okay no problem they sell it and meanwhile the people may not be happy with the area because they didn't know the area but we do want those toronto buyers guys if you're a seller we want them just a little example of the expertise and the experience that you will encounter if you go with the number one REMAX team in Canada, the Golfie team, 905-575-7700, online at robgolfie.com. That's Rob, G-O-L-F-I.com. So speaking of prices, the benchmark price uh, comparison from January 2023 to January 2024 is out, and it shows some interesting details the most interesting, at least to me, and you might have a differing opinion, is that the price of each and every neighborhood in Hamilton went up, Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, Glanbrook, Stony Creek, Waterdown, except for Hamilton, Hamilton Center, East Mountain, and West. Was that a surprise? Was that expected? I, it, it was a surprise. When I saw that, I go, really? I go, because Hamilton is like very affordable now. And I just think that's just for the month. I, I, I truly, I don't think you'll see uh, uh, it down. It was down 3% year over year in, in uh, benchmark price. I don't think you'll see that because you, you're right. Everywhere else, all the surrounding of ha uh, Hamilton was up except for proper Hamilton. And that, when I say proper Hamilton, that's Hamilton Central East, the Hamilton Mountain and Hamilton West. So that was a surprise, but I think it's just, uh, I just think it's just a fluke. 
I don't think you'll see that in the future. Uh, Brantford uh, was down also, and I think they probably jumped a little high uh, last year, and it, now it's still it's still settling a bit. And then you got uh, Grimsby uh, dropped quite a bit, eleven percent. I mean, and we had more sales in January uh, of this year versus last year in Grimsby. And the uh, benchmark price is 11% down in uh, there. But the, like some of the smaller communities, sometimes it, it's hard to gauge. It just depends. But, but overall, once the year gets going and, and things will, uh, will adjust itself and you'll see, you'll see that a lot of those numbers will start climbing again. Like I said, this year, I don't think you're going to see numbers climb overall uh, going to be like 10, 12% like like you know that that's that's a lot for a house to go up an average house you know is like 700 800,000 10 percent you know like it's almost a hundred thousand dollars it can't it can't it can't sustain that it can't uh it, it can't sustain that so um but yeah things uh yeah things are going well though i i truly feel that i think the worst is behind us we still got some bumpy roads ahead of us but i think it's going to be good uh the only thing that we have to worry about is affordability for a lot of uh young people that are coming into the marketplace from a sales perspective and we got uh, a couple minutes to talk about this the sales numbers the actual number of homes sold by far and large, especially in Hamilton and, and Burlington, Oakville, they were up this year compared to last year, January over January. So it, it sounds like the, the market is much more active now than it was a year ago. It, it is, absolutely. And, uh, and it, like, we're not going to see the, the devastation that it was in the 90s in, in like 1990, 91, 92. Um, I, I think it's just, uh, you know, it's adjusted itself. Uh, we have a huge population in Canada now with not enough homes. Um, so you're going to start seeing, you know, yeah, you're going to start seeing people putting houses up for sale, people buying, and people are getting back into the market. We're, we're kind of used to this uh, interest rate. We're not liking it, but it's kind of part of our life now that we have to get used to it. We do feel confident that interest rates will come down, so we just have to face the facts in, in, uh, in the housing market. Also of note, last stat before we go to break here, and that is Toronto. 20% more homes sold this past January compared to January 2023. However, the price actually went down 4%. Don't let anyone tell you that the average price of a home in Toronto is a million dollars because it is not anymore, $763,000, which is not that far off from Hamilton, Rob. 630 well, in Hamilton, so well, that is very interesting. It, exactly, and that's the benchmark price, and that's overall, that's a huge yep. area that's covering the benchmark price. But now if you go to the average sale price, you're going to get all the high ends there and the low ends, and it, and it, and it drives yeah. the price up. But this, this here is, is what the benchmark price is. So the housing crisis certainly being um, felt in places like Brampton, where there are some horror stories coming out, and we're seeing it on social media, where people are living in homes, but they're renting out several rooms. They're not actually renting out the home, they're renting out a room, or people living in a car on the property, or there are stories of Walmart parking lots in Brampton with cars in the parking lots and entire families sleeping in their vehicles. Rob, this is insane. It, it is insane. And you know what? And if they don't take control of this soon, it's going to it's gonna happen everywhere in every community. And, uh, and the reason why it, it's happening in Brampton, because what happens is when immigrants come into a country, um, they go where their relatives and their friends are. So, and then, and then those, rel and then their friends come and they, and they just continue. So they seem to migrate in different areas, just like, you know, uh, back in the fifties, sixties and the seventies, you know, you got the Greeks, you know, the uh, Greek town, you got Italians and you know, you, you got the Chinese, you got, everybody goes to where their, their culture is because they can relate mm -hmm. and they can understand the language. So what's happening here is we have such a high immigration and, and this is what's causing people. They don't, they can't find a home. They can't afford it. So people are, are, are literally parking cars in, in, in driveways, which people are agreeing to, like the, whoever the landlord is, and say, hey, you can park in the driveway and you can sleep in there because sometimes these people, they need an address where they can actually collect whatever, uh, whatever government assistance they need so they can get that money. And so that's their address. But this is ridiculous. They should stop this. Now, if, if this was happening to any, anywhere else in Ontario where uh, nobody was there, 
and and the neighbors called the police or or called that they would shut that down so fast now why are they allowing this to happen in brampton and allowing these guys they should say hey you got too many people living in this house it's not safe and you got people sleeping in cars in your driveway and that is not right move get them stop it it's going to get worse if they don't stop it now and and it, it yes it has to do with uh cost of living it's 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 expensive and the difficulty is like this is not going to change overnight there's no magic uh, hey here's a you know ten thousand unit apartment facility it's just they're they're not being built that exactly you know it, it it's not going to happen overnight it's just going to get worse before it's going to get better and once you get to a certain point beyond you can't change that. And you know what I mean? You just can't change it. Look what happened to San Francisco, one of the most beautiful cities in the United States to go to. And now San Francisco is one of the most garbage cities to go to. You don't even want to go there. I've been to San Francisco about two or three times. Loved it. And I remember I used to go for walks early in the morning uh, in San Francisco, down down the downtown area. And then you would see all the homeless people kind of uh, uh, coved up in, in, in the in the in the fronts of the stores, you know how they have the, the entrance and, and, you know, and you see them going urinating and going to the washroom there. I'm walking in the morning. I'm going, what's going on here? This is a, this is a, a city, but like, it's like these guys, but now it's, it's, it's gone beyond that. They can't control it. And it's going to, and it's, and it's all, it's probably too late even in Brampton to control this. It's, 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 it's gone wow. so bad. So it's sad to see this happening, but, I mean, what are you going to do? And, and that's why a lot of people are moving out of Brampton. They're moving to Niagara Falls. They're moving to Hamilton. They're moving everywhere. And let's hope that they don't start that stuff up in our in 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 in, in our area, Hamilton, Burlington, or Niagara area. Let's hope they don't do that. But I think I think people will will you know will probably try to stop that. You'll see neighbors. I mean, we're we're like I wouldn't want this in my neighborhood. I think I would I would call the police. I would I would try to do something. Say these guys should not be here. I don't like, you know, like they're tenting probably in backyards, who knows. Well, and the thing, I mean, it's February too. And luckily we've had some amazing weather, but this is this is unsustainable. People living in their vehicles and again, this is nothing new, but we're seeing it to a greater degree now. And when it comes to solutions, you know, apart from building new units, um, there's not much out there to begin with. You know, they, I think they, they have to turn the taps uh, off to the opposition when it comes to immigration because they're letting in, as we've talked about numerous times on the show, um, uh, you know, last year the target was one and a half million over the next three years. We've already let in about 500,000, 500 more thousand going to be let in this year, another half a million next year. Where are they going to go? I know, I know. And, and here's, the, here's the thing. If they stopped immigration... Let's say they stop immigration for three, four years. So the homeowners, they like it, but they don't like it. Now, they like it because they're stopping all this mess that's happening. What they don't like about it is, is the, the values of real estate won't go up as much as it is. That's what they don't like about it. The government should understand that, but obviously they don't because they keep letting people in. And uh, yeah. and, I, and I get it. You know, the people have relatives. They want to bring them into the country. It's a better country and everything. Really, our country is not that much better anymore. Our country is way too expensive to live in. Uh, it's hard enough for, let alone you were born in this country and you speak the language and you can't even make, it's hard to make it in this country, let alone some, an immigrant coming in. But an immigrant coming in, they have no problem living in a house with 30 other people because they're just happy to be away from where they came from because they were probably living on the streets there. Who knows? But the one thing right. is, the one thing is, is if they stopped immigration, it, it, it definitely would slow inflation. Let's catch up and then move on. Now, as a real estate investor, they don't want that because real estate goes up. As a, as a, as a personal uh, consumer, anybody, they want that because it controls things a little better. We're not going to have this kind of mess. So, Yeah, and this uh, you know, argument, for lack of a better term, of you know, we need more immigration to build these homes. We know, need more skilled trades people. And I say fooey to that. I mean, we have, what, 40 million people in this country. There's got to be enough people to build homes. Like, they're, they're, I know they're not growing on trees, but let's you know, start training more students. Let's start getting people into the skill, whether it's pipe fitters or... Uh, bricklayer, whatever the case is, we need more people in these fields. I, exactly. But here's the thing. Um, I find that um, like the immigration people that they're bringing in, they're not, they're not, they're not coming from a country where they, they are skilled labor or like, or they're, they know trades. 
you know, and, and I, I think, yeah. but look at, look at, look at Mexico. I mean, they're trying to get away from there. Those guys there, they're hardworking people, Mexicans, bring them. They'll, they'll be able to do the concrete work and the, the bricklaying and, and all that stuff. Like get, get people that want to learn trades and, and, and build this country the right way. And they, and they, and they'd be a good, uh, a, a, a tribute, uh, to the Canadian society, but like, but right now we're not getting that. I'm not sure what we're getting. I'm not sure what they're bringing in, but we need, we need, you know, skilled, uh, trades people that come into this country and we're not getting it. And, and that's another cause of why, you know, we can't build houses fast enough, but they, they've got to change their format. I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm not a politician. I don't, I know. And, and sometimes these, you know, the liberals and the conservatives can't get along. And it's like that everywhere you go around the world, like get along. Like our, their main objective is to, to, to make it good for Canada. Forget about fighting each other. Let's get along and let's try to make this right for the Canadians, not what's right for the liberals or what's right for the conservatives. Let's make it right for the Canadians. And that, and they seem to forget that they always want to fight and they always want to be against each other, but let's make this right. Let's everybody get along. Yeah, well said. Uh, to more, I guess, bad news, to make matters worse, there's a group of Hamilton area landlords who owe a lot of money in a bankruptcy protection case, uh, so much so it's upwards of $144 million. There's 11 related corporations that are involved in this. And Conrad Zarini, who you know quite well, a real estate broker, is saying this is just the tip of the iceberg. It is. This is just the beginning. These guys were probably in trouble two, three years ago, but it finally caught up to them. They probably had money lent to them because they were in trouble. Banks, sometimes if, if, if banks owe, a, uh, if they have a lot of loans with banks, banks, sees, they see that. They don't want to own the real estate. They don't want to foreclose on you. They may end up, you know, giving this guy more money to, to stay afloat, to keep going. Well, I, they probably exhausted that already. So these guys, what their problem is, I think, is that they bought properties, they got investors to buy it, and they and 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 what what it was was the art of the deal. These guys, they got uh, uh, like it was an endorphin. It was like a, a, a high uh, buying another property, getting another property, get another property. They were building this huge portfolio, but these properties need to have income, uh, income. And a lot of these properties didn't have income. They, they wanted to renovate them. They started renovating and all this stuff, a lot, just bad management on these people. And, and they bought like, like in Timmins, I think they own like 70% of the rental market there. Now, if they unload all this, that's gonna kill the real estate market there. Um, it, 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 like I said, this, it is just the beginning of, of something that we're gonna see. Usually people, if they're in trouble, you, you find out two years later. It's not, it's not now. These guys were in trouble, like, like as soon as the interest rates started hitting, they, couldn't, they probably couldn't even afford uh, the interest rates that they were because they were so cheap, and, but because they had too many empty places that needed renovations and they had no rental income coming in, and now it look at this it's a big mess and these investors that invested with these guys you don't think they're going to be upset that that you know yeah. that's why i buy my own real estate i manage my own stuff i don't have to worry about nobody that's going to take my money and it's going to go down the drain somewhere else i i even have friends sometimes they go to me like this hey rob listen i want to uh you know when you're buying it because they see you know I, I i'm i'm an avid investor they see that i'm doing very well with it and they go i want to go with you i say you know what i i, I you're a friend of mine i go i i I've had good, good luck. I've had a couple that have broke even in my, in my life. And maybe one that I lost just a few, a few thousand dollars way back in 30, 35 years ago. But I, I just, I, I would feel bad if I brought a friend in on something and it didn't work out as well as I anticipated. So I, the worst that, that I've had happen, I'd lost, I remember on Pearl street in, uh, in Hamilton, uh, I bought these two semis. It, I was young. Uh, I, I was just learning, but I got in and I got out so fast. I maybe lost, you know, two to $5,000. That's many, many years ago. And then at the other two, I broke even. So I actually have a good tra uh, track record, I think, for all the properties that I bought. Now, I don't want that break-even point with any friend of mine or even lose a few thousand dollars. But like I said, it's, it's, I like managing my own stuff. Uh, when you have somebody else uh, that, that is growing too fast, especially if you're, you got a friend or, or somebody's giving you a pitch that and they're growing really fast and they're doing fast, be careful. Keep, you, you know, you got to watch, watch what, what that's about. Growth. Too much of a fast growth is too good to be true.
And that's a good point, too, because especially from a friendship perspective, you and a buddy go in on a real estate investment. There's always going to be a discussion about, you know, what's next? You know, when do we sell this thing? How long do we keep it for? If it's a rental unit, you know, what's the rental rate? Should we jack it up this year or not? Whatever the case is, there's so many prickly points or potential prickly points that could you know, ruin the relationship as well. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of relationships are ruined. So sometimes there's guys that they've been lifetime friends and they got into a business uh, thing together. And guess what? Uh, it, relationship gone. It's it, Sometimes it depends on what partnership you want to go in with somebody. Now, normally real estate, if you're buying a, a duplex together, you know, two buddies and stuff like that, not a problem. That's easy. Like real estate, you hang on to it for 10, 20 years. You're going to, you're going to make money as long as you're both going to take care of it. And you guys are both going to contribute whatever it needs to be done on this property. You know what I mean? Like you hire out the lawn care guy or whatever you need to do, but you got to be very, very careful. But once you get investing, these guys were looking at everybody say, Hey, we, we got a portfolio. We're making money, this and that. It's almost like a Ponzi scheme. Like it's like, you know, like Madoff did. He kept borrowing, kept getting investors to go in and, and, and nothing was coming. Nothing was really being done. I don't know if these guys, I don't think these guys were scamming anybody. I just think they were just bad management. I, I don't think they were, I don't know what their lifestyle was, but I think it was just bad management on their part. And I think they wanted to grow fast. I think they, you know, they were striving. They wanted to be billionaires and 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 it and it, it it's going to be a price they're going to pay, and it's going to be everybody's going to remember this from uh, from them forever. Yeah, sounds like they got in over their heads a little too quickly. They've now filed for bankruptcy protection under the Companies Creditors Arrangement Act (CCAA), and th there is a you know another impact to this, and that's the money that they owe from a municipal standpoint. They owe about one point eight nine million dollars in municipal taxes. 468 grand in corporate income taxes, 532,000 in unpaid utilities, and 600K to contractors. So a lot of money certainly has been spent on their projects, but now they still owe a lot of money. And let's see how this uh, court case continues. Uh, before the break, I want to tee this up, and then Rob will get your thoughts on, on the other side of the commercial break. And that is, we've talked about this from time to time on the show, the, the difference between home prices now compared to yesteryear. And yesteryear in this case, is 10 years. So we're going to take a trip down memory lane and go back 10 years ago. And I'll tell you which are the highest in terms of price change in Canada. And there are a few in the local area that are in the top five list. The cost of a home now compared to 10 years ago. There's an interesting look back from Zucasa that looked at uh, house prices over the last decade. And these are single family homes and looking at the, the price difference from way back when to now. So December 13 to December 2023 is the date range. And they have a price change over that 10 years and a percentage change as well. So number one, the highest change in terms of percentage is the London and St. Thomas area. December 2020 or December 2013, the uh, price was $221,000, which seems like an absolute steal. December 2023, $616,000. So that's a 178% change from 2013 to 2023. Second on the list, Rob, you do business in this area, the Niagara region. Yes. December 2013, 230000 let's call it, to 630000 That's a difference of almost four hundred grand and a 174% change, second highest in the country. That is, that is crazy. It's, it's all the areas that are, uh, were low priced homes. Windsor is probably another one, um, uh, that would be there. Um, just, and, and I get it. Um, all these, different areas people are looking to move away retiring they go hey i can sell my million dollar house and go uh you know to chatham or to whatever niagara and and have mm -hmm. uh and get and get a uh you know a three hundred thousand dollar house or two hundred that like and I, i'm looking here in niagara falls in 2014 the benchmark price was two hundred eighteen thousand. so basically and now uh, benchmark price at, at, at the end of 2023 is 625. It almost, it almost tripled, almost. Yeah. And yeah, wow. like, like that's insane. And that's in 10 years. And you know how I say house prices double every 10 years? Well, this, like in a lot of some of these areas, it almost tripled 178%, which, which is, uh, it, which is insane. And any area that prices are low, 
they're it's gonna they're gonna uh, up those prices like 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 Niagara. Everybody from the GTA is moving towards Niagara, Hamilton, uh, Brantford is another area that uh, that a lot of people ended up moving to. So. It, you can't help it. People are looking for affordability and people are looking to cash out and, and put some money in the bank and, and still have the same lifestyle. So. Yep. Yeah. The national average, by the way, in terms of percentage change from 2013 to 2023, December to December was about 87%. But third on the list was Kitchener Waterloo, a percentage change of 159%. Guelph and area is fourth on the list and fifth highest on the list. Hamilton, Burlington, where in December 2013, the benchmark price of a single family home, $734,000. Fast forward 10 years, 861 grand. That's a difference of $487,000 or 130%. So in 10 years, home prices have gone up 130%. That's wild. It's insane. I know. That's it. Great investment. Everybody, good investment. Yeah, absolutely. From a, from a mortgage perspective, and this is interesting, too, because this study looked at, you know, how mortgage rates have changed in this 10-year span. And so they're basing it on the single-family benchmark price for each year and assuming a homeowner put 10% down with the five-year fixed rate of 3.24% in 2013 and 5.24% in 2023. So Niagara Region mortgage payments, for example, have increased from $1,036 in 2013 to about $3,500 in 2024. Just shows you that with two percentage points, yeah. you're spending about $1,500 more on your mortgage. Isn't that amazing? Crazy. Wow. Uh, yeah, two percentage points doesn't sound like a lot, but it does when you're, it, you know. It, it hurts you know, the pocketbook. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. It, it does hurt the pocketbook. And uh, we're seeing a lot of people, even like like I said before, restaurants are feeling, they're feeling it right now because people can't afford to, to, to buy, uh, go to the restaurants and stuff like that. There, there are people are going to the grocery store, cooking, cooking themselves and, and, uh, and uh, trying to figure out how to make their own pizza instead of ordering out. It, uh, it, it has changed the dynamics in the restaurant industry, that's for sure. I've certainly noticed that too from a gross, not to get off topic, but from a grocery buying perspective, my family, and I'm, I'm hearing from a, a number of other families, are doing what they're doing in Europe in places like Italy. They're buying for the day and, and that's it. They're not going on those, you know, four or $500 shopping sprees for groceries anymore. And it just shows how we're kind of managing our money a lot differently now. Yeah, like, like, absolutely. I was just talking to a guy. He goes to the grocery store after work every day. Goes right there. Yeah. And he does his little shopping, whatever he needs to do. And, and that's, he loves doing that. He's a European guy. And he goes, I just like it. I, I, you know, if I need, if I want to make salad or whatever, he's got all fresh stuff and, you know, meat or whatever. Mm -hmm. He buys what he's going to have that night and that's it. And, and whatever lunch he's going to bring in the next morning, next day. But he buys enough just for probably a day and a half of uh, food. That's it. And he's, and he's yep. there at the grocery store, which, which is a good way. You're not having any waste. You're not having something sitting in the fridge, you know, that, uh, that you're not going to use. And it's just going to go to waste down the road because it expires, uh, you know, uh, on the label. So what do you do when you're stuck with a pre-construction home or condo? So we've had many examples recently and in the past of builders building uh, homes or condos, you're investing in it, and lo and behold, fast forward a few years, interest rates have gone up, your bill is now going up, and now you just can't afford it. You're trying to get your deposit back. It can be a sticky situation, Rob. Yeah, it is ugly, and that's what we're going through right now with a lot of people. Um, I know that uh, people are closing on deals right now, and they're calling realtors and say, can you unload this thing? Because one, I don't qualify because th because of the interest rates. When I did buy this thing, this, this condo, uh, they qualified at whatever 2% interest rate, and, and the price now, they're, they're taking possession of it, and, and it's costing, they can't afford it. But, but here's one thing. There's, there's one here, we were in Oakville, um, just, uh, this week. And, uh, there's these, uh, this guy that were selling his condo. Now they closed on it, like, but, but there's a lot of people aren't closing, but he closed on it because they're going to make money. Cause they bought when the prices were uh, before COVID before COVID and it took a long time to build. So they, and they still honored the prices, the built, the developers still honored the prices, even though the cost of construction went up. So 
you do want to close on those deals, but you want to get rid of them because you don't want to pay the mortgage. But but you will make, uh, you'll probably make a couple hundred thousand dollars or $150,000. You take possession and resell it. But if you don't qualify, you don't qualify. So how do you take possession if you don't qualify? The builder, yeah. the developer, he can actually make money on these. No, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen sometimes. But like some some of these smaller condo developments, they, they started probably like, two years ago and they're ready now they're the ones that had high prices they they've got the high prices and now you take possession you're gonna you're gonna pay you put a you know fifty thousand down on the deposit you're taking possession now you can't even and the banks won't give you the money because you didn't qualify because of the current interest rates what do you do it's you you, you know you try to it, it's it's a tough situation for a lot and a lot of people are in that situation and people are in tears on this 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 is this is their livelihood and they're going to lose their deposits on it and uh and they may even get sued if the if the developer has to take take the, the over the condo resell it and if they resell it at a lower price than what the uh the the amount that you guys like the people that paid for they can come after you for the difference and say hey listen you know all the cost of me repossessing it and selling it and everything else like that they can come after you like just depends on the developer if he's got too many of them happening like that he's going to come after you so you got to be so you got to figure it's it's a tough situation out there i i hate i i would hate to see anybody in that situation but there is a lot of people in that situation <laughs> Yeah, just reading about one example back in 2016 where this individual agreed to buy a home from the builder, $2.2 million, and basically said, listen, I can't I can't make this work financially. You're going to have to sell it. The, the developer ultimately sells it for $1.5 and then sues the guy for $616,000, the difference in the sale price, price plus the forfeiting of the deposit. This This gets ugly in a hurry. It, it does. And that's why they have con that's why there's contracts. So if you go to court, you're, you're going to lose because you signed a contract at the time you, you, you're, you that's the risk you take. When you sign something, you take a risk. Now, everybody usually thinks it's going to be great. Everybody, but nobody expected this to happen. Once this is all over with and we're back on track, yeah, we're going to we're going to go through the same situation, maybe not interest rates or whatever, but we're going to go through the same situation again maybe within 10 years. It's hard to tell. The last the last time we really had a, a bit of a downturn in the market was in 2000 uh, I think the beginning of 2017 was kind of a boom and then things started coming down. But I don't know if, in, in, I can't remember if interest rates were an issue there. Again, it ha before that, it was 2008 and nine that there was a recession there. So it, it happens. You gotta, you gotta, you, it's just hard to tell. You just, it's, everything's a risk. If you take a risk, the rewards are great, but also the reward, but also it can be pretty bad too. It, it, so it's hard to tell which, which direction you'll go. You will definitely be rewarded by calling the Golfy team at 905-575-7700 and getting the number one REMAX team in Canada working for you. If you want to sell your house or you want to buy a home, 905-575-7700 online at robgolfy.com. That's Rob G O L F I. Dot com. Don't forget, you can listen to our show online through Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. Just search for the Golfy Real Estate Show on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to hit that follow button so you never miss an episode. Thank you, Rob, and thank you for listening to the Golfy Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition. We're back next Saturday at 9 on 900 CHML.